Okay, so I get a lot of questions about if I'm in a band, how do you get to the next level? A lot of people feel stuck, like they're just spinning their wheels, they can't really get anywhere. And I like to tell them about when I was 16 years old, I was in a teenage metal band, as some of you guys probably know. Anyhow, uh, we learned a huge lesson this one particular summer where we all got together and decided on a singular goal. So I think that's a huge first thing is to make sure you're all on the same page when it comes to your band, that you all want the same results. Uh, the one thing that we really wanted to do is we wanted to play the, the best club in Minnesota at the time, which is First Avenue. Still is, I would say. And First Avenue, if you've seen Purple Rain before, that's where Prince plays. And uh, so many bands have played First Avenue, including Metallica, who was our biggest influence back then. So at first it sounded like a big pipe dream, you know, oh, we're going to play First Avenue. But once we really became serious about that goal, it was kind of impressive what happened because we hadn't been around that long. Up until that point, we were playing basement parties and some talent shows and stuff like that. And once the summer was coming up and we were about 15, 16 years old. So it was one of the last, what I call summers of innocence. And that's before all the big life stuff starts happening. Like when you get to 17, 18, you know, jobs and girlfriends and all the real life stuff starts happening. So we had this summer all to ourselves to where we could do whatever we wanted to with it. So we decided to make band practice like a job that summer. So we decided every day we're gonna come to this band practice space. We're gonna start at a certain time, we'll end at a certain time, and we'll just do it during the week like a job and see how good we get by the end of the summer. And it was the perfect storm. You know, I had just gotten my license and I was able to drive my friends to band practice. And my drummer lived on, this, uh, on the lake. He had a lake house, his parents had a really nice place. And so we would go there and the whole place was ours. Uh, it had its problems, you know, we had like a neighbor lady that would call the cops on us all the time and stuff. But uh, for the most part, it was a, it was almost the perfect place to have band practices back then. So what was really important was that we all sacrificed our summers to make this band better. So it's almost like we all had stake in the band, kind of like a stake in the company. You know, if you're uh, in a business, you all have to have something that you sacrifice for the business. And for us, it was our time, our freedom. And, uh, you know, when you're young and summer vacations like we're finally free from school. We get to just sit around and have fun. We decided to sacrifice that for the for the good of the band uh, to see if it would pay off. So we did it. We would get together around 12 o'clock every day. We would start. Uh, we would go through the set many times. We would play each song maybe five times. We'd work on every single little detail that we could. We got so good that we were starting to predict what each other was going to do. Sometimes when you're in a band for long enough uh, and you get good enough, that starts to happen. It's kind of cool. It's like ESP within the band members. And we would get done around five o'clock when his parents would get home. Now that first month was kind of a test for us because it feels like whenever you start on a very ambitious goal, it seems like life will sometimes test you a little bit. And it was not easy. You know, like we would play for five hours a day and that was already kind of draining. And then we didn't really feel like we were getting that great at first. It felt like we were just, you know, getting through it and not making as big a strides as we wanted to. That didn't happen until the second month. And all of a sudden, when the second month came, we had played these songs so many times that every time we went back to play it, we would just work on the smallest details. And that's how the band got really, really extra tight that summer, I believe. The details started to uh, get tightened up and everything started to flow. And one of the best feelings back then was that we finally had control over ourselves. Up until then, you know, everyone's telling you what to do. Parents and teachers are telling you what to do with your time. And so this was a great getaway from all that finally for all of us. Here are four guys in a room playing music together and we were making decisions and it felt like we finally had control of something and actually felt really good. And so we all learned to sort of uh, take on a role for the band that we could help. So we all kind of delegated almost by ourselves. It's like, well, I'll try to you know, make the logo if you do this and you do this. And it became sort of like a small business, which is great. Sometimes you see a band and only one or two people are running the show and everybody else just sort of you know follows along. Well, in this case, everyone in the band was pulling their weight and trying to do something for the band. And by the end of the second month, we were actually getting really good. Uh, now that I look back, we were really, really tight and we started to get creative. So we thought, okay, if we're gonna play First Avenue, we can't stand in a circle and practice anymore because we don't do that on stage. So we started to line up all facing the same way. One time we went outside and three of us went up on his upper deck and played and our drummer was downstairs uh, below on the bottom deck and we tried to put on a fake concert. That lasted about three songs and then the neighbor across the lake called the cops. I guess they could hear it all the way across the lake and they 
shut us down. But I thought that was kind of cool that we had like the uh, the ambition to actually go out and try to do that, to create our own concert, to make our own situation to see if we were actually ready to play out. And if you've ever seen Field of Dreams, I kind of ascribe to the philosophy of build it and they will come. And we didn't really know it back then, but we were actually building something. Uh, we thought we were just playing music and getting tight, but we were building a band. We were building this entity. And because we did that, I believe life kind of rewards you if you get through the challenges that it puts up in front of you right away. And all of a sudden, things started coming to us. It was really strange. Like, people started knocking on our doors, and it wasn't just the cop to shut us down. After a while, like, for example, our drummer's drum teacher knew somebody who booked First Avenue. And so it was pretty incredible that after the second month, all of a sudden we heard that there was a rumor that we could possibly get in on the next Metal Massacre show. And the Metal Massacre was just this big showcase of all the metal bands uh, locally, and they would bring in a couple of big bands to headline. But we found out that we were able to open the show, and that was like a huge deal. It was such a great feeling to have that goal between all of us, work really hard, and then see it come to us. Now, the big lesson that we learned was that we didn't sit around and wait for the opportunity to come and then try to get good to match it. We got good beforehand and then it came to us. So that seems to be a problem that uh, a lot of people have is that they sit around and wait for something to come before they really put in the effort. But if you put in the time now, it's surprising how things come to you. So it's the build it and they will come philosophy that I believe in. So we did it, we ended up opening the show. We were so nervous and excited at the same time. Our adrenaline was pumping. And I think we got through the first set playing twice as fast as we wanted to because we were so excited. You know, it's that kind of thing. But what was great, things went wrong. You know, our bass player's speaker cable melted. I think it was leaning against his tube and it just halfway through a song went out. But um, it was kind of cool to see we fixed it. We still got through it. So we had to power through that. So we met our goal, which was incredible to see the result of all our hard work. But one of the best things was even after we reached our goal, we didn't just sit around and say, well, that was that, we did it, see you later. Instead, we took a few days off to let it soak in and then school started up again and we went back to practicing because after we were able to do that, we kind of thought, well, what is there that we can't do? You know, so we had this wide open feeling of everything's, anything's possible. So we kept at it, which I was really proud of the band for because it's really easy just to lay down and sort of rest on your laurels after you accomplish a big goal, but we wanted to keep it going. It was exciting. So I'm really hoping that my story can inspire you, whether you're in a band or not. You could do this by yourself as well if you have individual goals, or even if your goal is just to get into a band. Uh, use some of those principles and you'll see that they work for you as well. So what I'm thinking of doing is doing a full band reunion podcast. We're going to bring in all the guys uh, that I was just talking about, the band I was just talking about. Hopefully that could uh, add on to this video and it can give you even further insight into what happened back then and during that summer. And uh, it's just really amazing to know that if you apply some of these principles that we just sort of fell into back then, uh, things could really start happening for you. All right, guys, we'll catch you soon. Thanks for watching and uh, take care.